In a stunning announcement that's sending shockwaves through the space industry, Chinese officials have revealed their plans to launch reusable rockets as early as next year. But that's not even the most incredible part of this story. What's up, spacers? This is your specialist, the space technician. China isn't jumping on the reusable rocket bandwagon. They're blazing a trail that's never been explored before. But here's the real kicker. The way they're planning to do it is unlike anything you've ever seen before. Forget about landing legs and touchdown pads. China has a completely different approach that's going to blow your mind. And trust me, when you see it in action, you'll be picking your jaw up off the floor. All right, enough talk. Let's dive into the details and uncover the secrets behind China's reusable rocket revolution. Remember, strapping in is optional, but recommended. First, let's talk about the rockets themselves. The China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation, or CASC for short, is developing not one, but two reusable rockets. The smaller of the two rockets, measuring 13 feet, or 4 meters in diameter, is no slouch when it comes to performance. While the exact details have not been released, it's likely that this rocket will be used for a variety of missions, including satellite launches and cargo deliveries to China's space station. The rocket's reusable design will allow for quick turnaround times between launches, significantly reducing costs and increasing the frequency of missions. But it's the larger rocket with its impressive 16-foot, 5-meter diameter that truly showcases China's ambitions in space. Believed to be a variant of the Long March 10 rocket family, this behemoth is designed to carry heavy payloads into Earth orbit and beyond. The Long March 10 is a three-stage rocket, with the first stage powered by a cluster of seven YF-100K engines, which are liquid-fueled and capable of producing up to 1,177 kilonewtons of thrust each. The second stage is equipped with two YF-100M engines, while the third stage features a single YF-75E engine, which is designed for high-altitude and in-space propulsion. The Long March 10's modular design allows for different configurations depending on the mission requirements. For lunar missions, the rocket is expected to be capable of delivering an astonishing 27 tons, or 24.5 metric tons, of payload to translunar orbit. To put that into perspective, that's the equivalent to the weight of about five adult African elephants. This impressive lifting capacity is crucial for China's plans to establish a permanent presence on the moon, as it will enable them to transport the necessary equipment, supplies, and habitat modules for sustained lunar exploration and research. But the Long March 10 isn't just a one-trick pony. Its versatility extends to a wide range of missions, from low Earth orbit to deep space. The rocket's modular design allows for different upper stage configurations, enabling it to carry payloads to geostationary orbit, Lagrange points, and even as far as Mars. This flexibility makes the Long March 10 a valuable asset for China's space program, as it can support a variety of scientific, commercial, and exploration objectives to the moon and beyond. But before China can send astronauts to the moon, they need to ensure that their rockets are reliable, safe, and capable of handling the rigors of spaceflight. And that's where the ingenious minds at CASC come in. They've developed a unique system for recovering the rocket's first stage, and it's a testament to their innovation and expertise. Unlike SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket, which uses a set of landing legs to touch down on a designated landing pad, China has opted for a different approach, one that's straight out of the pages of a science fiction novel. They plan to catch the rocket's first stage mid-air, using a system of tightening wires and hooks. It's a concept that sounds almost too incredible to be true, but the engineers at CASC have turned this dream into a reality. So how does this cutting-edge recovery system work? It all starts with the rocket's first stage, which is the part of the rocket that provides the initial thrust to lift the payload off the ground. Once the first stage has done its job and the rocket reaches a certain altitude, it separates from the rest of the vehicle and begins its journey back to Earth. 
As the first stage descends, it deploys a set of hooks located near the top of the stage. These hooks are specifically designed to latch onto a set of tight wires that are strategically placed on the landing platform. The tight wires are made of incredibly strong yet lightweight materials, capable of withstanding the immense forces generated by the descending rocket stage. Once the hooks make contact with the tight wires, the wires begin to tighten, gradually slowing the rocket's descent. It's a delicate balancing act, as the wires must provide enough tension to decelerate the stage, but not so much that they snap under the strain. The landing platform is also equipped with advanced sensors and control systems that constantly monitor the rocket's trajectory and make real-time adjustments to ensure smooth and precise landing. But the tight wire system is just one part of the equation. To further enhance the rocket's maneuverability and control during descent, CASC has equipped the first stage with variable thrust engines. These engines can throttle their output, allowing the rocket to make fine adjustments to its speed and trajectory as it approaches the landing platform. In addition to the variable thrust engines, the first stage also features grid fins, small movable fins that are mounted near the top of the stage. These grid fins work in conjunction with the engines to help steer the rocket and keep it on course during the descent. By adjusting the angle and position of the grid fins, the rocket can make precise corrections to its trajectory, ensuring that it lands exactly where it's supposed to. The combination of the tight wire system, variable thrust engines, and grid fins creates a highly sophisticated and redundant recovery mechanism. Each component works in harmony with the others, providing multiple layers of control and safety. It's a testament to the skill and ingenuity of the CASC engineers, who have pushed the boundaries of what's possible in the realm of rocket recovery. But why go through all this trouble to recover the first stage? The answer is simple. Cost savings. By reusing the first stage, China can significantly reduce the expense of launching payloads into orbit. Each recovered stage represents a substantial investment in materials, engineering, and manufacturing. An investment that can be leveraged across multiple missions. This cost-saving approach is crucial for China's ambitious space exploration goals, including sending astronauts to the moon and beyond. Of course, developing a reliable and effective recovery system is no easy feat. It requires years of research, testing, and refinement. CASC has conducted numerous tests and simulations to validate their design. From small-scale models to full-sized prototypes, each test brings them one step closer to achieving their goal of a fully reusable rocket. The implications of China's reusable rocket technology are far-reaching. Not only does it have the potential to revolutionize the country's space program, but it could also inspire other nations and private companies to explore similar recovery methods. As more players enter the field of reusable rocketry, we can expect to see even more innovative approaches and breakthroughs in the years to come. But China's government isn't the only player in the game. Several commercial firms, including Landspace, CAS Space, Galactic Energy, iSpace, and Deep Blue Aerospace are also developing their own reusable rockets. It's an exciting time for the space industry, and I can't wait to see what breakthroughs these companies will achieve. As we look to the future, it's clear that reusable rockets will play a crucial role in our journey to the stars. With SpaceX and now also China leading the charge, we can expect to see more frequent and affordable access to space, opening up new opportunities for scientific research, technological innovation, and human exploration. So there you have it, my friends. China's plan to launch reusable rockets by next year. It's a story of ambition, innovation, and the unrelenting pursuit of knowledge. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this topic. Leave a comment below and let me know what you think about China's reusable rocket program and if it will work sooner than SpaceX's. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell.
This is the Space Technician, signing off for now. And I'll see you, Space Cowboys, in the next one.